What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another collaboration here on the YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell. But today, I have a, a very, very, very um, powerful brother, one of the guys that influences a lot of black men everywhere to travel. Some of you may have seen his work, and I'll let him introduce himself. Go ahead, brother, introduce yourself to the people. Uh, how you brothers doing? Uh, this is Al Grease. Filmmaker, director, frustrated one and two and three coming up. All right. And brother, I want to say your work on the frustrated series, uh, black men are frustrated. It, it was the, 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 the first documentary that we saw that black men were frustrated uh, with their position in the United States, especially dealing with another African-American woman. It was greatly produced. It was one of the probably the best black man that docu documentary that I've ever seen. And then the, 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 the part two with the child support was also well executed. So I just want to say, man, as a brother, um, I, I really appreciate the yeoman's job that you did on both productions. And I, de I damn sure can't wait to see Frustrated 3. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the kind words, too, man. Uh, I think with Frustrated 1, I was a little bit ahead of my time mm -hmm. and really didn't know what I had with that i'm being honest didn't know what i, what I had with it and really in the beginning when it before i released the project i really wasn't happy with it and wasn't going to release it and my brother got on me like man you crazy you got to put that out man and i was like nah it's too many you know some technical errors and stuff because we did a lot of guerrilla filming in brazil mm -hmm. and you know, didn't have the permits and stuff so when you're running and gunning it sometimes the shot don't come out right so i wasn't happy with the product man but now uh speaking about it now man um you know, couldn't be more satisfied from seeing the response I got from it and seeing the impact that it had, that it had, and seeing guys travel now and travel groups coming up and all these guys and you know uh, hit me up, want me to mentor them, man, and wouldn't make this and that, and want to chat with me, man. So I, I appreciate that and help me build, help me build my brand and help me build my base, you know, and uh, get my core. Being an independent filmmaker, trying mm -hmm. to find your, your, you know, your, your your customer and stuff, man. So that helped me out a lot. So it helped me propel me for two and and, and, and uh, keep going. Yeah, and, and speaking of inspiring some people, because not only did it inspire me, there was a brother on here that it inspired by the name of Charles Tyler. And he was, I mean, if you were like Peter, he was like Paul, right? He went, and, you know, you were the first one to kind of put the gospel out and he went and spread it like wildfire. And what I found out from you know, just coming across Charles Tyler on YouTube before he passed. But there were so many African-American men that were interested in Brazil. Now, I know that Tariq Nasheed had went to Brazil before. He talked about it. I knew that my brother used to tell me about it. It was kind of like more under wraps between black men in America. But, you know, uh, and you just recently came back from Brazil. And you, you, what, what was the first year that you went to Brazil? Oh, man, I, I, I can't... Uh been a while back man i over 10 years okay uh, you know over 10 years man the first time i went out and i and uh i decided to go out there just uh i was i was in the gym working out mm -hmm. uh and, and my workout buddy man i was like you know every so often man i take a break you you know put in hard six weeks and then you stop because you prevent injuries i'm not i'm not in competition and i'm like that but just to stay in shape Mm -hmm. So uh, usually I take a break after six weeks and then switch up the routine and then get back in the gym and hit it again. And I was like, man, you know, I need to take a break. And he was like, man, go out to Brazil. I was like, damn, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know nothing about Brazil. I don't know, too, I don't know anybody out there. And he was like, oh man, here, go out there, man. I came out there. You have a ball, and man. He gave me some contact information, man. And I went out there, and uh, man. I <laughs> <laughs> I went hard. And listen, I went hard in the paint. I went hard in the paint. Okay. And it, it, it blew my mind, man. I, it blew my mind. Uh, not just the women, beautiful women and stuff out there, man. But mm -hmm. the fact that I was the prize. You mm -hmm. know, when I walked in, I was the prize. And I, you know, I went out there with some, you know, on, on my fly game. You know what I mean? I didn't know what mm -hmm. to expect, man. So I went out there, had all my top gear and all that shit. Go out there looking fly and all that shit, man. And um, I came to realize that wasn't important. That wasn't important. The fact that I was a black American dude, I was the prize. And people mm -hmm. were competing for me. The chicks mm -hmm. was competing, you know, competing for me. And uh I struggled a little bit because I just didn't know a, a, 
a lick of Portuguese. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't know a lick of Portuguese. I didn't know what to expect, man. I struggled, you know, going to the restaurants, just trying to order breakfast and shit, man. Mm-hmm. And they looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, man, <laughs> I can't get no waffles, man. You got the waffles. I want this. I want that. You know, I was struggling like that. Right. But uh, people were real cool and and uh, friendly, and they looked like me. They looked like me and came over and helped me out, man, and helped me navigate through it, man. And I was like, wow. You know, it, it just had a big contrast of what he's seen in the States. And I'm from New York, so New York is, you know, you kind of on your own. You know what I mean? You know, if you try to approach a New Yorker the first day, I, you know, you don't know me. You know me? So why are you approaching me? Like, right, you right, know, right. You, know, so you don't know me, you know. But out there, it was like real cool. And the women was gorgeous. They was all in shape. You mm-hmm. know, and, and, you know, I didn't see, you know, you know, it, struggling and, and overweight. And, you know, the beach was right there. So yeah, the beach bodies and all that stuff, man, they were real cool. And mm-hmm. how they greeted you, you know, when you went up to greet them, they kiss you on the cheek. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, kiss you on the cheek and all that. And it was real friendly. And uh, I just sat down and I had a good time. And when I came back home, when I came back to, uh, came back home and um, my cousin, my cousin, he lives in Maryland. He throws his big family barbecue. Mm-hmm. every year so man I, you know i came back home i went to go tend that and you know like oh where you where you, where you just coming from you got that tan on your side i said man, i was out in brazil and then the frowns came on <laughs> all the females around that he had invite, invited man just frowns i mean all frowning up i'm like damn what's wrong what's wrong with them man what's wrong mm-hmm. with them yeah i know what you were doing you ain't i was like what the hell are you talking how you know you was doing you was with me and mm-hmm. Uh, my my cousin's pa- a co-worker put me to the side and he was like hey man you know they got that article out man the essence man you ain't read that i said nah you know i don't i don't read essence like that he said yo man go read that article man so i read the article man and, and it was just totally opposite of what i just experienced and i was like what so i read it then i look at the author i looked up the author and i was like oh man you know you know, they said, uh, uh, you know, got nothing against homosexual, but you said a, a homosexual to write about a heterosexual man experience in a place. And and um, I called, the dude hit me up. He was like, uh, Dr. We still cool to this day. His name is Dr. Larry David. And he was like, yo, you check that out. I was like, yeah. I said, oh, that's trash. He was like, your cousin told me you're a filmmaker. You should do something. I was like, what? What, what you talking about, man? You should do something on that, man. And so... I did some research on it and I started doing some more. So I said, yeah, I went back out there just to get some research. And I met, I met up with the big homie, Johnny Johnson. We still cool to this day, man. He ride with me and um, I met up with him. He was living out there at the time, a guy from New York too. He was living out there and some other guys and uh, did the research and put it out. I put it out and, um, you know, I, it just blew up. It just blew up. So let me let me ask you this. You, you, you said that people were um, looking down on you because you had went to Brazil. What did now? Dr. Larry Davis wrote the article. No, no, he didn't write the article. Uh, okay. Johanny Cobb. Johanny okay. Cobb. I think he's a doctor too. Dr. Johanny Cobb. I know mm-hmm. he's a college professor at Spelman at the time, but now you see him on uh, MSNBC and commentary. Okay. And all. He wrote the article. Dr. Larry okay. Davis, was, you know, he uh, referenced me to that article. Go check that out. I see. What what were the contents inside of the article that you know that they that he that the, the brother wrote? Well, he I, uh, you, you well if you go on uh, he 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 stayed on Copa Copa Cabana and he really just sat there and and, and um, there was like a, a big at that time they had a, a club out there club help that was real big and 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 they had a little restaurant right next to it. And he just stayed on that one block. I'm just saying, he, he wouldn't write for Essence, and he stayed on that one block. When I went and did my research, uh, man, I went to other cities, neighboring cities, went to Niteroy, went to other spots, and and, 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 and kind of peeped it out from there. So I just felt the whole thing was biased, and I know Essence has more resources than I do. But this guy, mm-hmm. they said the guy out there just to sit on one city block. <laughs> this is set on one city block. Okay. And, I, and, 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 and kind of captured everything on that one city block. Right. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And I moved around and went, went, you know, went to Lapa, hung out in Lapa and seen the scene in Lapa mm-hmm. and, and, and um, going to Nidoroi and all that stuff. So I was like, well, how, did, how did, you know, he just come up on one city block and stay for like four days. And then I got it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that's not that's not that's not Brazil and that's not real. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I decided to do that. Maybe really 
put the batteries in me, man, to go ahead and do that piece. And it was an excellent piece. Like I said, the 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 one it was so good that uh, people, everybody on YouTube was 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 downloading it and re-uploading it, and it was getting a million views. It was getting a million views over there, and um, you know, yeah, that, and what, that hurt me bad, man. I was trying I know. to, and that's what the uh, you know, rest in peace, man. Rest in power, Charles, man. And he was, you know, he was looking for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I give I, I became good friends, man. Good brother. He was looking for me, and at that time, man, I was trying to stop the bleeding. I was bleeding bad. I, I just invested money in the product and everybody's uploading it over here, over here. And at that mm-hmm. time, YouTube was like uh, real defensive about it. They was like, yo, you got to prove it's yours. And uh, so I had to submit copyright papers and all this stuff to them, man. And and it, it took a while for them to act. And people's getting millions of views and I'm losing money. I'm bleeding. And Charles was reaching out to me. And uh, finally, you know, we... Uh, I took his call. I told him, somebody reached out to me that knew me. It was like, yo, this dude named Charles Tower looking for you. I'm like, who, who the hell is that, man? And he was like, I don't know, man. He keep he keep bugging me, man. He say he want to talk to you, man. I was like, man, hey, just just go ahead and give him my number, man. Tell him to call me, man. And at that time, man, you know, dealing with uh, trying to stop the bleeding and all this, man. And uh, I finally took his call. And he was just like, yo, man, I want you to come on and do my show. And I was like, well, you know, what's, what's your show? Mm-hmm. I do the Charles Tyler show, and I was like, "Well, should, reach out to uh, my publicist, man. She'll reach out to you, and you get set up." He's like, "No, no, no, man. My show is Thursday. It's tomorrow. Just come on, man. Just just come on for about a minute and stuff." And I was like, "Man, all right, I'll do it. I'll do mm-hmm. it. No problem. I'll do it." So I called in, and you know, he was real excited. We talked for a second, man, and I guess his phone his phone lines lit up, and he was like, "Well, listen, we're gonna go ahead and take calls," and I think his show was like maybe two hours. I think he did mm-hmm. a two hour show. Mm-hmm. And we chat for about a half an hour. And then for like the next hour and a half, phone lines were lit up. So I was just talking to Cass. And at the end of the show, he was just like, I just want to give you your audience, man. That's your audience. I just want to let you know there's people out there that appreciate your work. We're part of this group, man. We like to, you know, I want to bring you into this group, man, because it's based on your work and these cats that love you. And I, that's all I wanted to give you, man. That's it. I didn't mean to bother wow. you, disturb you. That's all I wanted to give you, man. I was like, wow. I was overwhelmed. I was like, yo, yeah, let me get part of this, shit, man. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know they was moving like that. I didn't, I didn't, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm looking at one side of it. You know, I'm just looking for people robbing me, but I'm not looking for people who's trying to give me, right. give me back something. And that, that was, that was Charles. Charles was always willing to give. He was right. a giver. And yeah. I was like, wow. So, you know, I went to Philly. Uh, he lived in Philly. So I went to Philly, man, chopped it up with him in Philly. And, um, you know, he was a good dude, man, and we formed that little bond, had that little friendship, man. So I appreciate it. Miss him too, man. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Um, I, I was sad that I was only able to get there like two months after he died, but uh, to, to Rio. But let me ask you this: Why are so many black men? You know, and let's just be honest. We talking about African American men, you know, our people, um, the, the guys that you know are, are from our lineage, right? I know a lot of black men, you know, other people. But I can't really speak for why they want to do it, but mm-hmm. for African American men. What is it about Brazil? Because it seems like when you talk about Colombia, you know, there's a DR. But you look at Brazil, it's always on top in compared to those places. Why are African-American men so attracted to Brazil in comparison to other places? Well, I, listen, I, I can't speak for all. I'll, I'll speak for some that I've uh, traveled with out there now. Okay. Uh, with, the, with the Black Man Option Group now. So we, we do trips out there and bring uh, uh, brothers out there. Uh, you the prize, you 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 the prize, and when you go out there and you the prize, and it's not all about uh, uh, what you got on, which 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 you which you which you which you, which you uh, you know uh, how much how, how you know what you driving and all that man, um, it's 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 kind of a little shell shock, but it's different, man. When I, when I go out there, man, for, if I find these stuff, I shop at Target. <laughs> no, I get me some Bugs Bunny T-shirts. <laughs> it's, 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 Mickey Mouse shirt off. You see, you see my sh- right. Like, none, none of that. Sh- I, they don't want no Gucci. I don't need Gucci. I don't need none of that. Sh- mm-hmm. And uh, I, I get no Jordans. I go out there. I, I, and I, my new Jordans are the flip flops. What? <laughs> I get me, I get me the flip flops. I got the flip flops, man. I put them on, and and and, and I'm good. And because okay. I'm the prize, and just imagine. I'm just saying. Just imagine. You know you. Um, you you don't need none of that, man. When when you're trying to date, approach women, you ain't got to look 
you ain't got to have you, you ain't got to have none of that on. You can just be yourself, and, and you the prize. And they're coming after you. Okay. They're coming after you, man. And they're gorgeous. They're beautiful. They're feminine, real feminine, man. And 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 they. It's hard to describe, but you got to see it. <laughs> you you got to see. Yeah, it, yeah. Man. No, no I, I, I um I I believe you because you keep going. So, but let me ask you this. Because you know you're gonna have some detractors, um, you know, in 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 the, in the comments and things. And one thing I liked about your first documentary, you allowed the detractors to give their position inside of the documentary, which was I would have been like, man, hell no. That's what was so powerful. <laughs> you let the opposition have their position inside of the video, right? I, but th that gave it balance. Yeah, it that did. Gave, that that, 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 that was gave it excellent. balance. Yeah, and, you know, you, to keep it real, when I went to um. Because I did some film festivals and stuff. Mm -hmm. I did some film mm -hmm. festivals, and because I allowed that in, mm -hmm. so when it was time after it was over, you go up and speak and answer questions and stuff like that. And we was, I told, them, listen, let's have let's have an honest discussion. Let's really have an honest discussion. Mm -hmm. And they had to admit some of them felt that way. Some of mm -hmm. them was on that ideology. You know, uh, I had a chick. She was just saying she just graduated from college. She was working for some company. She said she was making about thirty five, forty grand a year just starting out. And she was, you know, the, the the dude, the UPS guy, she was attracted to him and they would flirt a lot. And her girlfriends pulled her to the side, like, shit, he wear that brown uniform. You don't fool with him. Don't mm -hmm. fool with him. And she felt, she said she felt she messed out on a uh, on a good thing because she she allowed him to influence her based on the guy's appearance, but didn't know him, didn't know his intangibles, the hardworking guy. The dude that delivered for UPS making 70, yeah, 60, 70 was... grand a year. You know yeah. what I mean? And and she just looked at the fact that he had the browns on that he he was worthless mm -hmm. he was worthless and 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 she was she kept it real she was like you know i messed up at the biggest the moment man i had a i saw a brother i was coming in and uh, i had a brother i was mad because they gave me a poor time slot mm -hmm. they gave me a poor time slot because they had some women on the board that didn't like the project <laughs> they, they didn't like the project so they gave mm -hmm. me a time slot mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm up in the morning man i'm walking through i see this brother walking through and he didn't know what to go watch. I said, hey, man, you know, I just did frustrated, man. You come on in here. He was like, oh, yeah, you did that. I said, yeah, producer, director, come on in, man. So he went in. And after it was over, he stood up and he told me, he said, listen, man, I just want to thank you for um, for inviting me in. You know what I mean? And, you know, I was going through some things and I thought I was the only one. But I just want to show you, brother, keep it real with you. While the film was rolling, I had booked my flight already. And he pulled up his phone. and he <laughs> I'm out of here. Thank, I just want to thank you, bro. I just want to thank you, brother. I want to thank you, man. So, I had I had moments like that with, with you know when when uh, honesty because I told mm -hmm. let's have an honest discussion. Let's ha let's be honest right now. It's just us in this room, you know. This is us in this room. You know what I mean? And and you came out early in the morning and you came to these film festivals and stuff. So let's engage. And they mm -hmm. kept it. They kept it 100. And, and some of the some of the women that was there said that you know they had those bad bad uh, uh, thoughts or feelings and stuff towards men and men was feeling that too. And we, I think what made the film so so popular was it gave them an outlet. Most of the guys would just talk about this and that, this and that, you know, I'm going through this, this and that, but it gave them an outlet. You know, mm -hmm. you, can, you can come over here and, and get a different treatment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them went out there, man, and, and, and found so and the guys got married. I had a dude, I had a brother hug me in the street crying. He was tears coming out of his eyes. He turned around. He just hugged me. I was like, "Yo, you all right, man?" He was like, "Man, I just want, I want to thank you, brother. I want to thank you, man. I was trying. I didn't know what to do, man. You got me out here. I was listening to Charles and I saw your shit, man. And you, you, you guys finally inspired me to come out here, man. And I just want to thank you. I had a couple of brothers crying on me, man. Mm -hmm. Going out there, Georgia trip. I had these brothers to get overwhelmed. You get mm -hmm. overwhelmed because you're going through so much and you don't think there's an outlet. Mm -hmm. You don't think there's an outlet. And sometimes brothers are afraid to travel. Uh, by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, don't know the language barrier. So what Charles created when he created that group, man, and and we started uh, doing the group trips. It gave brothers a uh, the resource. Yeah, give them resource and, and got rid of that fear factor because you know, right. I, okay, I'm going out there with other brothers, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm not by myself. Right. And, and and once they got out there and they start, started moving around and then when they started experiencing, man, it just overwhelmed mm -hmm. them. So that that you know that experience, man, I'll never forget that, man. Let me let me ask you this because you know people are gonna want to know. Well, okay, why are you the pro are you the prize because you're just because you're an African American male man because that's the only thing that makes you the prize. Like you don't have to do anything. You just show up, and because you're an American citizen, is that what makes you the prize? 
because you know some people are going to say well like you know these are guys who don't do good with women in america so when they go over there they're well, let, me, little... let, me, let me ask you this i'm mean, going to interrupt you but yeah, go ahead. Why, why 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 we don't do good with women in america you got to answer you got to answer that question first why we don't why are we so combative towards each other here in america mm -hmm. you know what i mean versus you know you don't make like like when i had the the, the opposition in the film they were saying right. you, you don't make this kind of money you don't make this and they don't look at those other intangible qualities, what kind of dude you are. Mm -hmm. I know some I, being in the group, I know guys that own their own business in the medical field, mm -hmm. uh, doing well for themselves. Ain't no way in hell they should be single. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way in hell they should be single. Mm -hmm. You should be, you should be somebody should have scooped you up and have two or three kids by you already. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and and the fact that they escaped that shit, kudos to them, you know, not being dealing with that child support and and, 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 and and in and out of court and all that, but you're so frustrated too. Those brothers mm -hmm. there, man, because you know, they really can't escape because financially they ruined for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you see brothers that's traveling that's out, that can get out and about and have value to themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you something to value, you know, if you was walking down the street, I don't care if you in New York, Brazil, Africa, anywhere, you see some gold laying in the street, it's got some value to it. Yeah, you got some, you got some value to it. So they know you American. Number one, you American, you American. So mm -hmm. you, you and you out there traveling. So you got to be about something. Mm -hmm. You got to be about something. So that's attracted to them already. Because most guys, you know, you, if you you ain't holding too much, you, 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 you're going to Georgia for vacation. You're going to, you know, you go, you're right. Going to <laughs> Miami. <laughs> that's true. It's yeah. really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it costs it costs a little dime to get out there. So if you're coming out there already, so they looking at you. Okay, mm -hmm. he's American guy, so he's out here on vacation, so he got to have something to himself. So you, mm -hmm. they, you know, they engage you, they engage mm -hmm. you a little bit and see where you at, see where okay. you at mentally and stuff like that. And then when they find bingo, you the prize, you know, that's it. And how you carry yourself, how you okay. carry yourself and stuff when you go out there. Yeah, because when I was uh, even looking at, at the documentary that you had, uh, you, you know, and even when we have those travel videos on youtube and they tend to do very well whenever black men talk about travel those are the videos that really take off you know very far as far as the algorithm you you see people come in both men and women and their situation and, and their response is that well okay these women are poor which is the the argument that we heard in frustrated one and because they're poor they're looking for a way into some financial stability this is the reason why they are dating uh, American men, if they had more, you know, guys in Brazil that had more money, then they wouldn't be so concerned with you. You know, they're only, you know, they're only doing that because it's you. What do you have to say to people who who have that particular mindset? Listen, it's a global market. It's a, it's a global market. So if I'm back, if if I'm here trying to trying to compete with you know my neighbor next door for. Uh, Shaniqua or whoever and she don't see my value in me and I can go over to Brazil and she can see the value in me so be it if you don't see it why are you complaining if to me if I, I if, if I have no value to you because I make x amount of dollars which you know then what I make but it, because I make x amount of dollars and I can go over here and mm -hmm. she can see the value in me mm -hmm. because I make x amount of dollars and I can change her life and make an impact in her life and change her life so mm -hmm. be it I mm -hmm. tried to I tried to extend myself to you, but you don't want to work with me. I got to come in instant and ready made. I got to come in at house and stuff so you can move in and take it from me ten years later or five years later and take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You want to take my right. from me ten years later? That's right. how long it's gonna last because you got different, you know, cultural difference. Because over there, right. family means family means so much. I'm gonna tell you, I tell you a quick story. And I ain't mm -hmm. gonna say his name. I don't know if you want me to tell you, but I know a guy that went out there, met a chick, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they they kind of they, they were speaking and stuff, and they hooked up, and he came back, and it was his birthday. He came back for his birthday out there. So for his birthday, her whole family threw him a birthday party. The whole family came out. They had a cake for him. They had a whole party for her cousins and all that stuff. They came out there and greeted him and met with him and stuff, and it blew his mind. Mm -hmm. It blew his mind because even he, you know, he was like, man, in the states, my birthday. I'm lucky if 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 if, if I get calls from my own family. Wow, you know what I mean, you know, yeah. you lucky if you, your family will call you, wish you a happy birthday. And if they do via uh, Facebook and, and and you know a text message or shit like that, but mm -hmm. her whole family came out and threw him a birthday party. And wow, they didn't didn't even know him. 
he knew her and she told her yo i'm coming back and she told her family yo it's his birthday and they threw him a birthday party and they in the family unit there's real tight the family mm-hmm. unit is real tight there mm-hmm. and that's you know that's the one of the things that you know i noticed out there the family unit is real tight man and mm-hmm. I, you know i grew up i grew up in a in, in large family and i like that it's appealing to me you mm-hmm. have the fact the family unit is, is tight like that and not just mom dad brothers and sisters extended family as well the one thing i like about frustrated was um the 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 african-american men that you were interviewing they it seems like maybe they were in their in their late 30s early 30s maybe to the 50s there was a wide variety of age group of those brothers that you was interviewing and all of them were very successful uh you know in america so, and one guy was a firefighter um the brothers was just you know they were they're were doing pretty good and my and my and what I kind of felt was that because these guys who were in the upper class or upper middle class uh, in America that were leaving uh, and 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 taking their resources away, it, not that the sisters was like really checking for them, but because they had already achieved so much with their own self agency, that made a lot of sisters upset. It's, do you think that uh, that some of the citizens in America that are commenting about, you know, brothers going to Brazil, this is just a different type of man, like some of the best black men that we have? And well, it, go ahead. That, that, no, but you, you had that. You had, I had police officers, firefighters, uh, accountants. Uh, right. uh, the, well, well, my question is, why are they single here in America? Mm-hmm. Why are they single? They, 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 they firefighters here in America first. You know what I mean? And, and police officers and stuff. Why are they single? Mm-hmm. Because most most black women tell you that's not a, that's not enough. That's not enough for them. That's not then that's not appealing to them. Mm-hmm. You know the hardworking blue collar guy that goes out firefighter, police officer, and all that stuff. Though you got to like I said, they want an instant. You got to have this that I want this. I'm not gonna work with you to get it. You should have mm-hmm. it already. And, mm-hmm. and, and and you can go over there and say, well, listen, you know, back home I put out firefighters and I got to you know, a, a modest three bedroom house. And, you know, it, it, that, that's what I got. It, it, see, that, that's more than enough. Mm-hmm. That's more, that's more than enough. And they can add on to it. Mm-hmm. You know, here, it, it, the relationships here are challenging, man. And, you know, from, from, from frustrated looking on what's going on now, man, and, and especially social media, we see the buffoonery, man. Mm-hmm. We, we see it. You see it. I see it. I mm-hmm. see it. And, and, and that's all they're doing is attracting more guys. Mm-hmm. more guys to the bmo group and and more guys that want to get out and travel more because you know you got a guy making listen you you can make uh 40 grand and live comfortable by yourself here or well not in new york but you need your 40 grand mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> you could you could you know it's other parts of, you could you know you can make a decent salary and, and not get caught up in the system and producing babies and child support and all that there you can live good man if you mess up here with 40 with 40 grand 50 grand yeah. you back home in your mom's house in the basement right you know what i mean and you're struggling for the next 20 years for mm-hmm. the next 20 years so let me ask you let me let me ask you this because um you know in brazil and um you know me and my buddy was having a having a show and we were like well um you know because the the, the 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 portuguese is such a difficult language and stuff like that that there's a lot of barriers that you know a lot of black men can go there but um you know setting up something full time moving there full time it might be more difficult than let's say an english speaking country um what are what are some of the challenges that you see that black men are having with relocating to brazil and uh, you know how are they able to um support themselves that you the, the way that you see that they're supporting some of the brothers have moved there full time now how are black men supporting themselves in, in Brazil while they're trying to, you know, adjust and things like that? Well, listen, when you go, if you get motivated, if you get motivated enough to to to, uh, to do anything, you'll get it done. So right. The, the language is a challenge, but them brothers is knocking that out. They're knocking it out. What, what I like about it, man, especially in the group, you got guys that, you know, who want to go but don't know the language. You got guys offering to teach them the language, to mm-hmm. live out there to teach you the language. Now, business is business. You know, once you learn the language and you learn how to move around and whatever skill set you have, you, you'll be successful. And especially when you can pull in, if you've got ties to pulling money from America with the, mm-hmm. with the exchange rate, 
with the exchange rate over there and you can do business there and do you know a lot of guys do still do business back in america especially with you know with the cryptocurrency and all that stuff now and making money online i don't have to physically be in the states you know i i could i could be in brazil and still make money mm -hmm. and still do my thing and still do investment do some investments and stuff and team up and, and that's what's uh so cool about the group now you know because we were teaching before forex trading and all that stuff doing trading we're getting back to that doing the forex training and all that stuff so you teach brothers how they can make money off um online and now that the guys that made it out there they're coming back to show brothers how it's done so it's like a big networking system man because brothers once they get out there they want to see other brothers succeed mm -hmm. so they're sharing that information hey man you know especially uh that's why i went i, I just came back from sao paulo sao paulo is, is the business capital is like uh it's like manhattan so you go out there man that's you know a lot of bread out there and mm -hmm. i know a couple of brothers out there man they say yo Grease, you come out here you know uh my skill set is filmmaking you know and I, I i'll still be able to go out come here make films and go out and live out there it's, it showed me how to move some money around where i'm grabbing money from the states and grab money from over there so that's not it's, it's that's not a challenge man because we're working together there's enough brothers that had enough man and seen brothers get slaughtered here and mm -hmm. don't mind mentoring younger brothers and helping them get out so that's that's not an issue let me ask you a, a controversial question because a lot of people say well a lot of african-american men are big enough brazil but in brazil you know the the black people in brazil have been treated some can even argue even worse than we have been treated and the police brutality in brazil could even be worse than what it is in america so you know for for an african-american man to want to resort go back to that particular kind of place just because he has some privilege you're not looking at the experience of of how racist brazil truly is toward blacks and if you weren't from america they would probably treat you the same way what would you say to people who have that position? I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but you know that Brazil is extremely racist towards black people, and um, and then the only thing that's saving their brothers is, is just that they have an American passport. Well, I, I, I haven't heard that. I haven't. Okay. I haven't. I haven't heard that that sentiment yet. Um, I, I you know, I'm, I'm transit now, so you know so that's something I really can't speak of because I'm transit now and I don't live there. Okay. I, I don't live there full time enough to see that. So I know guys that live out there and, and, that don't experience it because they have Black uh, Black Pride Month, that Black Pride uh, Pride Week. Uh, they celebrate. They celebrate their the, the the African culture there. So when you like you go down to Lapa, they have clubs there that just play African music and 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 and, and still showcase that. So. I, I can't really speak on that because I haven't mm -hmm. experienced that and I, I don't live there full time enough to experience and really pay attention to their politics, to the politics there. And uh, I can't I can't speak uh, intelligently on, on that issue. OK, OK. Let's talk a little bit more about the Facebook group um, that that you, that you guys have now. Um, what is the actual name of the group? And I'll put that link in so that brothers can go and join on Facebook. T tell us about the, the group and uh, what, what the brothers can expect from being in that group. Well, the group, the name of the group is the Black Man's Option. Black, Black Man's Option group founded by Charles Tyler. Uh, what you can find in that group, man, you'll find brothers, uh, uh, educated brothers, uh, intelligent brothers who, who, are, who are seriously looking to uh, explore their options outside of America. So in that group, you'll find mentorship brothers that are looking to mentor other brothers. Uh, you'll find uh, forex training classes, investment classes that they offer, and also group trips, putting group trips together. So brothers that are still sitting on the sideline, afraid to go out on their own. Uh, we're doing group trips, not just in Brazil. We've done uh, looking to do Colombia. We did Thailand, looking to do spots in Africa. So you get that and you just get a lot of information and a lot of networking and kind of where a brother can come in there and, and kind of air out his grievances without without uh, having that backlash it, 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 that you may have in other places. So this, this is it's a brotherhood and you expect, that's what you expect. You come in there, there's a brotherhood and uh, we're all about, you know, just kind of helping each other not get caught up in, in the bad situation what we call the matrix. You get caught up in the matrix here. So try to avoid that stuff, man, so brothers can live their best life. 
All right. Well, I definitely thank you, uh, Mr. Grease, for coming on. Man, like I said, I'm a really big fan of your work. And when I was able to get my first interview with you, I was very excited. I was pumped. Like, man, I got Al Grease. And then Obsidian, he interviewed you. And uh, not only has your work expired, you know, so many brothers, but, you know, our community in, in, in this community has grown. And so we were, were really looking to collaborate forces um, and, 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 and push you out there as, a, as an African-American male um, filmmaker because you come from it from our point of view, our position. And we don't have a lot of people that are doing that. And I do want to thank you for uh, for your work. Um, any last words, you know, for people that want to uh, contact you or buy your work or purchase your work? Uh, how, how can they do that? Oh, first let, let me let, let me just say, man, I appreciate your kind of words, man, and I appreciate your support, man. Now when I you know now when I get the hit, I'm like, oh man, old Shay want to interview me. Oh man, let me get ready. Then I, <laughs> I shave that day because barbershop get a line up, man. So I'm excited, man. Anytime old Shay, you know, anytime you reach out to me, I'm like, damn, old Shay want to hit me up today. So I'm excited, man. And I, I I see your progress, man. You're doing your thing, man. So I appreciate you having me on your platform. Um, I'm gonna be uh. I'm on the, my web, I have uh, greasefilm.com. You can go to mm -hmm. greasefilm.com. It's under construction right now, but it, it, the, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm reaching out to, man, branching out, excuse me, branching out. So I'm going to be doing Frustrated Radio along with it, man, and uh, uh, starting my own little group page, also uh, Frustrated. But uh, most of the time you'll find me on uh, Black Man's Option. But anybody that's looking to, interested in reaching out to me, man, uh, go through the Black Man Option. Uh, you can hit me up on, um, you know, Grease, go go to uh, greasefilm.com. I got a page, man. So if you want to reach out for me, you can do that there. And uh, just looking to keep it growing and, 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 and still, you know, hopefully I can inspire brothers uh, and save brothers one life at a time, man. I just want to, I'm just, you know, try to avoid them with that child support stuff, man. And that, mm -hmm. that was, uh, that was really scary, man, because I interviewed uh, uh, people in the legal system family court mm -hmm. judges and stuff, man, and hearing their response to some to some of the questions, man. And, you know, best way to beat that system is just, just to stay out of that system, you know. And I remember asking the judge, well, what happens if I'm paying child support for a kid that's not mine? I find out it's not mine. And he flat back told me, man, you know, well, that's going to be problematic because, you know, you're already giving resources to a kid and we don't see no, no reason why you should stop that because it's not yours. Said, well, shit, that's the biggest reason why we should stop that. I'll pay for something that's not mine. Mm -hmm. Well, you already got your established relationship with it, so ain't no need to stop that. So you can go ahead and continue paying that. And I was like, wow, wow. And then, and then, you know, on the other side of that, you know, uh, you know, women withholding kids, can't see your kids. There's no penalties for that. And he was just, he was just breaking it down. I don't want to give it too much away. I like y'all to go out there and check that out though. Yeah, but, uh, and guys, buy all the buy the films, man. We need to support our brothers. I mean, he has really, really good, excellent work. Of uh, I bought those films on it was Amazon, I believe. Last time I bought one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's on Amazon. Amazon.com. You can put up a uh, frustrated, uh, frustrated, uh, and frustrated chapter two, chapter three coming out, man. I'm going to be breaking down the family unit and uh, uh, hashtag Black Family Matters. And you know, as long as we don't have that intact, man, we won't be successful here. No, yes, that's absolutely right. So, uh, brother Grease, I'm def I'm definitely glad I, I got up um, at three thirty in the morning my time to do this because Al Grease was coming by. So I was oversleeping, and you was on time. I wasn't, but I wasn't going to miss this opportunity to talk to, uh, to to a brother who's had so much impact on so many African American men's lives. So thank you so much, and uh, guys, check out all the information on the first comment pinned to the top. And brothers, and thank you for your support, and uh, keep it real. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Right here, Black Man's Option. Peace.